413. Hang on a sec. Dog. Good morning, everybody. This is Cannabis Hotline. Everything you need to know to grow cannabis without all the nonsense. Um, it's Sunday. Good morning. It's a little early. We're going to start showing a couple minutes. Um, I got 413. You still there? 413. 413. You still there? Oh. All right. 413. Good morning. Give me one sec. I, I'm not ready to start the show yet. Give me a couple minutes. Everyone will show up. I'll be right with you guys. Let's all smoke a bowl, collect a couple more viewers, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll do the damn thing. Yeah, I'm here. All right, 413, give me one sec. We'll start the show in a minute. Yeah. You got to turn down your computer, 413. All right. Yeah. Partly cloudy, I 420. I got your pictures. I got a pictures from a couple of you guys. We'll go over them today. Um, yes. Yeah, so give me one sec. We'll start showing just uh, in just a sec. Um, the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you want to call in, if you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And yeah, I just can't get used to doing that. All right, give me one sec. We'll get this started. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty much ready to go. Um, hey, 413, give me one sec because I just want to talk for a sec about the uh, the comments on on uh, in live chat. So you guys are all talking about LEDs. I just I, I just I I, I want to I want to be clear on my opinion on LEDs. I think LED lights are fantastic. I like them in cars, I like them in bathrooms, I like them they save electricity, I like them they produce less heat. They don't have anything to do with growing cannabis. I mean, you guys keep saying what I like and don't like. And frankly, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what light you buy, I don't give a fuck what nutrients you use. I don't care about any of it. The reality is, growing cannabis is like anything else. There are more ways to crash your car than there are to drive successfully. If you want to drive successfully, you're going to follow the traffic route. You're going to follow the right RPMs at the right speed for your car. You, I mean, there's just, if you want to be successful, there are a few ways to do it. If you want to fail, there are a thousand ways to fail. And you guys keep ascribing these emotions to me and it's, 
absolutely irrelevant. I mean, you guys keep telling me what I think and how I feel about these lights, um, about the nutrients, about this or that. You guys keep telling me how I feel. You guys keep telling each other how you feel. And I, frankly, it just doesn't enter into it. Like auto flowers, hey, you just start twice as many. There's no... I, I, you know what I mean? There's no difference in auto flowers or anything else. You've never heard a bud and said, oh, this is from an auto flower. 951, I got some pictures of you too. What, what I'm saying is you guys think this is, I mean, you go into surgery and you're not like, oh, let's, uh, let's say a prayer or a chant over the tools. You don't say, oh, there are lots of ways to do this surgery. You don't. There are not lots of ways to fly an airplane. There are not lots of ways to, to, to be successful. There are, however, a lot of ways to fail. So I would appreciate it if you guys would stop telling me that I don't like LEDs. I think they're great. I think very specifically, my words are very clear. And I'm very clear with my words because I don't want there to be any ambiguity about my opinion. Why? Because when you leave this show and you go back to all the other videos about growing cannabis, I'm the only one saying the things that I say. So it's really easy to be like, oh, and this is what he said or this is what he meant. But I don't leave any room for interpretation. So I, I want to be clear. All nutrients, all NPK comes from the same place. I don't care what nutrients you have. Doesn't matter what nutrients you have. They're all the same shit. Doesn't matter what the nutrient companies tell you. Of course, understand that additives and supplements are not nutrients, but all nutrients are the same NPK. All, if all bud is the same, then what does it matter what light you grow it with? Yield is based on light. The more light you have, the more yield. Uh, is some light more efficient than others? Yes, some light is more efficient than others. Is it enough to matter? Maybe, most likely not. Why? Because almost everybody that grows cannabis fails. And all I'm saying is, if 85% of people that start growing cannabis fail, and all but is the same, how does it make sense to spend to buy an LED? I mean, just from the math, LED is tied for second place for the highest probability of failure. So when you guys make statements, you really should try to be clear with what you say. Because as soon as you say, oh, and you're ambi you know, you're, you're, oh, it's this, and you're arbitrary with your words. I mean, there's a reason that 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 there's two different scalpels that look the same to me and you that have two different names because they serve two different functions and they're not the same thing and until you understand the difference between all the components making arbitrary blanket statements i guarantee you will cause you to fail when it comes to growing cannabis it has to that's like arbitrarily saying oh you should drive at 2500 rpm or you should fly with your flaps at 10% or your rotor at 7% tilt or your whatever it is. Soon as you try to try to arbitrarily say something or you 100% commit to a position, you leave yourself no room for adaptation. You leave yourself no room to impose experience on what we're talking about. Because soon as you ask for a rule, soon as you ask for a feeding schedule, soon as you say, hey, what should I be doing? Blah, blah, blah. You no longer open yourself up to the experience. And if experience doesn't have anything to do with this, then, then why are new driver rates so insurance rate so high why is a new grower failure rate so high why do i tell you your third grow is your first grow why do i say all these things if 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 you're not going to if you're not going to absorb them redirect your jargon i mean there's a reason that there's jargon that each that each industry has its own jargon because soon as you say something all surgeries require intubation. What the fuck are you talking about? All soon as you say all, 
there is no none or all. There's this gray area in between. And let's see how that applies to our first caller. 413, I, I appreciate you coughing and hacking into the phone this whole time. What is it that I can do for you? Yeah, I was wondering, like, right now, this is probably my second grow. Okay. And, you know, when you ever see a plant, what would I do possibly when it cracks? So right now, I have a couple of plants that got, like, little bumps in it where I, I have cracked them because I ever see my plant probably every three days, I would say. I LST the plant. And right now, I just started. It's my second grow. I got six plants. And that's pretty much my only problem I have right now. I got oxygen. I got ventilation. My humidity is staying at like 65, 70. I got good fan circulation. I'm using the number 10 pot. I've been dead for two and a half weeks right now. But that's my only problem. Pretty much having, having a little bump in my plant from where I had LST and the plant had popped open. But it's still growing. They haven't died. I have no yellow leaves, no infestation of bugs. None of that is right now. Let me get this straight. Your plants are two and a half weeks old, and you LST them. You low stress train them every three days. Yeah, and beds right now. I say every week right about now. I haven't been LSTing that much as of right now. I couldn't imagine how you would LST them every three days at all. I mean, I'm telling you, you shouldn't even be looking at your plant but once a week. You're doing something every three days. I don't understand. I don't understand how you could. What you're doing is so extreme. Like, first, LST, low stress train, technically, is when you grow a plant very tall like this and then you lay it down and you let the individual branches come up. A scrog would right. be where you top them and you let them bush out into a scrog and while you would still work it into a trellis, the only way to, the, first off, let me say, the only people that ever tell me that they're low stress training a plant have too much light and they're over watering and it doesn't matter if your plant is green or yellow. You could have killed it a while ago with too much right. light, and they'll still be green. Um, so let me ask, what size bucket are you in? Um, right now I'm in a number 10 pot. I don't know what that is. How many gallons? Um, eight gallons. You're in an eight-gallon bucket. Did you start from seed or clone? Uh, from clone. Okay, so you got a clone. What did it come in? How did you get it? Um, it came in, it came in um, I think, like a one-gallon pot. Because <clears throat> it had been going for a minute, the ones uh, I had got. Okay, so it's not really a clone. You got a teen. You got a vegging. You got a plant that was already in a one-gallon pot. Okay. Yeah. How, so, so you didn't get a clone. You got a plant. How tall was the plant? It was very short. They had been trying to early pretty much. It, no, it had just, been just off already. pick a number. Pick a number because very short isn't like 8 inches or Probably 10 like, inches. No, it's like about 3 to 4 inches. So you got a, you got a seedling in a 1-gallon bucket. So you've got a 4-inch plant. Now, I'm going to suggest that if I had that plant... I would be in a 24 watt light. I would have that plant under this light. What light do you have your plant under? Right now I have two 600 watt S HPS lights. Are they both on? No, not as of right now. Okay, so so let's what I really need you to do is stay focused on the question. And if you can answer the question with the information I'm looking for, that would be fantastic. The question I'm asking you is, how much light are they under, not how much light do you own? How much light are they under? 600 watts. How much? 600 watts. And how far away, and how far away is that light? Probably like three foot. 
So I'm suggesting that you should have 24 watts worth of light. And you should probably be in a 16 ounce red cup. You would only, you would only water once a week and you only top it when you transplant into the next size bucket. You, sir, have, you, sir, have 24 times the amount of light. It is twice as close as it should be. So you have 50 times the amount of light. You're in a hundred times the bucket size. You're touching them 300% more than I suggest. And you think the problem is there's bumps on your leaves. I would like to suggest, sir, that that you are so far away from growing cannabis that that I, I don't think I, I don't think you're you're getting the basics here. You're in second gear in the fast lane. You're running your car at 5,900 RPM in second gear at 65. I, I don't I, I don't see in any way how you could consider a plant this big. If, if you're going to finish with two 600 watt lights, then how can you give a little plant 600 watts? I, I, I don't, you see my point? Like it's out of control right. what, you're, what you're doing. I mean, this is, listen, I appreciate the call. Keep listening to the show. Um, what I'm suggesting to all of you is that when it comes to growing cannabis, it just, it just isn't what you guys think it is it just isn't what you guys think it is it's uh there we go maybe that'll work a little better for me it's it is and so when we talk about l you know how this this caller right here he's got he's got he's got what four goes into a hundred six times four 24 times the amount of light um when we talk about leds i again i i just want to point out that uh, i i just want to point out that when we talk about leds i don't understand why where the confusion comes from in my opinion because here's a guy who's got 24 times the amount of light that he should have okay so let's do some quick math here this is a kind 600 i think it uses like 450 watts worth of electricity that's a 600 watt light if look at the size of that box that light is literally one by one and a half big it's 600 watts in 1.5 square feet if you put a 600 watt in this light right here, that is two by three. That's six square feet. If, if a 600 watt in a supersized hood puts out the same amount of light as an LED does in 1.5 square feet, then this light, if they put out the same light, it has to be by definition four times more concentrated. If your light is four times more concentrated, that means you've decreased the area. So if this hood is meant to grow over a four by four, this is meant to grow over a two by two. Listen, four by four is 16 square feet, two by two is four square feet. So not only is it four times brighter, it's one fourth the area, which makes the light 16 times brighter. Now, Now, the light, just the math. I don't even care. I don't own any. I don't. I mean, I guess I own more LEDs than everybody else because there's 15 of them in my store. <clears throat> my observation here is only just by the simple math of what the manufacturers claim. They're already 16 times brighter, smaller area. And the probability, the number one problem of you killing your garden is with too much light. So you've got a light that's too bright. In too small of an area that costs four times five times six times more than the light everybody else uses listen I don't care if you buy an LED I sell them so don't tell me 
that the girl boss hates LEDs. I think LEDs are great. I make money off of them. I don't understand how you can presume to speak for me. What I can tell you is that my is that every time I give you one of these little speeches about how growers do too much, the next caller that shows up is right on topic. It's the same thing. This guy had 600 watts of HPS light. I mean, how could you fail any harder than with 600 watts of LED light, which would be like 1,200? 831, good morning. Good morning, Bill Ross. <clears throat> Got a quick question. I was going to buy your ultimate uh, 300 or the 100 GPA. I was okay. how the box come in, the extra membranes here in my town, or do I have to order them straight from you? Um, no, I don't really sell them to hydro stores. It just comes in a white box with some fragile stickers on it. It's, uh, it just, um, uh, it looks like, well, I can't, uh, reach one cause of my back, but I'll show you what, I'll show you what they look like. They just, uh, they come in a white box like those right there just white box we cover up the labels so it just shows up this is the back of the store it's coming along we got a three light rotation a two light rotation we got the scenes that we're building the back of the set so i can explain more equipment to you guys and the growers yeah but they come in or just a white box that says fragile okay and then it has uh, i can buy all the membranes that a hardware store or something like that well i also if sell it all out. i also sell it all on the site you can't you can, if you buy them with the ro i mean the shipping's already included from the ro you can't get them cheaper than i sell them i mean when you guys want to order that okay. stuff like i make my money off the ro at that's the time when you're going to buy an extra membrane buy two extra filters because you're already paying shipping it, it only gets six dollars more expensive the next time you buy see what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Grobo. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so this is 95, 951 is calling. Good morning. Good morning. Um, now, this is 951 from yesterday, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. What's go so what's going on today? They're not light related today. It's what? not light related today oh. <laughs> so what's going on today <laughs> okay um nutrients um, <clears throat> i understand um a, a, from a general consensus your stand on npk is you know it's all the same npk is npk yes. um but i understand that supplemental nutrients is different through different manufacturers my question no. To you no, is, no 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 there are there are there it don't confuse manufacturers uh, and an enzyme is not a hormone calmag is neither an enzyme nor a hormone <clears throat> i don't care if you buy sensizyme prozyme hygrozyme i don't care what zyme you buy enzymes are enzymes then when you buy microbes like clonex microbes some microbes are more dense than other microbes but there's still only 20 microbes whether you buy clonex that has them all in there or you buy a product that has four of them in there for like the granular for transplanting there's a fixed number of microbes i don't care if you buy cali magic or botanicare calmag cali magic and calmag it's independent I mean, they're both GH. They're both they're both Scott's Miracle Grow. So don't confuse manufacture with product because Nirvana and Liquid Karma and Floralicious and all of those kinds of things are similar. So there are similar. Oh, and this was the picture that I'm showing you. Uh, this is nine five one that's on the phone. What I'm saying is. You have to judge each product as on its own merit. There's CalMags, there's hormones, there's enzymes, there's PK boosters. You can't arbitrarily, I, I just think you go too far 
with your conclusion. So I didn't want, I just wanted to back you up because I'm a stickler for that accuracy because it's easy to turn something into a myth or some nonsense cannabis growing something or other. So I just wanted to point out that you go too far. So you were saying that, that the, that the, that they're, that the, the additives are different. Go on. Yeah, so my, my main point is that I currently use Elite Nutrients with a couple other small supplemental nutrients from other lines. Um, I want to go with like a, a general hydroponics line, and I want to stick to it by the book, how they say, um, you, know, I, you know, I'm a newer grower. I'm coming into my third grow, so I want to try to do it as smooth as possible. And like you said, you know, check on the plants once a week or, you know, like spend as less amount of time looking at the plants um, than I have to. So I'm, I was, my question is, is, is it worth the money to keep buying the expensive nutrients I'm using or should I just go with a general hydroponics line and, and just follow it to their spec? Well, it, it, when you say follow it to their specs, I just want to point out that every nutrient on the market is based on 10 plants in one gallon buckets vegged for four weeks, then transplanted into three gallon buckets and flowered for eight under a thousand watt light. That is every spec for every nutrient is based on a very specific set of rules. Now the question is, do you have 10 plants vegged for four weeks, then, then moved under into three gallons under a thousand watt? Is that what you have? No. Okay, then how would you follow their specs? Well, the uh, general hydroponics line I was looking at, their feeding chart calls for veg for four weeks and then flower for two months. I know. I just um, told you. I and, just told okay. you. Every chart is based on a four-week veg and an eight-week flower. It's also based on 10 plants in one-gallon buckets during veg, and they get transplanted into three-gallon buckets for flower. All of this is under a thousand watt light. So again, I ask you, if the chart is a four week veg with an eight week flower, 10 plants in a one, then a three, and it's always under a thousand watt light, do you have that garden? No, I'm running then, the thousand watt light, but I'm running five gallon, but I'm running okay. one gallon buckets in veg and then transplanting to five gallons for flour. So you clearly can't use their schedule. I don't, okay. I don't see how you could make that jump other than, oh, this is what I want to do. Because I don't even think you knew that all the nutrients are based on a four-week veg, eight-week flower with a thousand-watt light <clears throat> and 10 plants. No. <clears throat> because remember, if you have the same size plant in a five-gallon bucket instead of a three-gallon bucket, you have to feed... 30% less. Why? Because you have 66% more soil. A three gallon bucket has three gallons. A five gallon bucket has five gallons. It has two more gallons. It's 66% more. Therefore, whenever you feed, 66% more nutrients will remain in the bucket. So you have to feed one third less. I, I, I'm just saying that. So as a, as a new grower, what would, you, what would you recommend as more of a foolproof smooth um, feeding schedule and feeding chart? Well, I would say that a thousand watt light is too much for you uh, unless you want that okay. much yield. I mean, how much yield do you want? Do you want three ounces a week? I want, I want a pound a plant every, every 30 days in a three room uh, rotation, three by <laughs> rotation. So That's my goal. if you want to pound a plant, let's just be clear then because you've you've started your analysis at the wrong point if you want to pound a plant you have to grow so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pull up the picture you got your computer on yeah i'm watching on my phone right now okay all right so if you want a pound a plant then you have to grow a four by four canopy one foot thick at the start of at the start of flower you have to grow hang on i got oh you have to grow these plants you have to grow plants this big that plant will get you a pound a plant may me not quite that big but you're going to have to grow if you want one pound per plant 
you're going to have two plants in veg, one in each of the flower tents in your three light rotation. So you're going to have to start flower. It doesn't matter how many plants you have. You have to start flower with a four by four square, one foot deep with a top in 85% of the squares. You're gonna have to have a 10 week veg. How do I know? Because let's take a look at, I will show you. Um, give me one sec here. Garden rescue, too much. Garden rescue, too much light. Um, so here in this garden, I specifically show you the size of the buckets. And this is the same thing with the last caller too. I mean, these are a thousand watt lights. Look at the size of the hood. Look at how far away they are. I mean, that's, that's two plants back here. So if you want to grow a pound on one plant, you would have to, instead of two plants right here, you'd have to grow one plant a little bigger than either one of those. These are in 10 gallon buckets. There's three plants in this front section. There's four under this light and four under this light. So this was a 10 week veg. If you want to grow a pound on one plant, that's fine. But what you're going to do is you're going to grow this bush of a plant. In fact, I'll show you what you have to do. You have to grow the one, two, three light rotation. You have to grow You have to grow a bush of a plant like this. Um, nope, I want, uh, I want trellis, um, grow boss trellis. Okay, you're going to, you have to have an extra long veg because you're going to do a true LST. You're gonna grow like a tall plant. You're gonna kind of lay the branches down. So you have an extra long veg, why? Because you have to turn a plant that's, that's this big. See how big that is in the tent? See how close it is to the light? But there's all these open areas on the side. You're gonna to have to turn that into this, I mean, that canopy was two feet tall. It's now two inches tall. Now you may not quite make it two inches tall. You'll probably do something along the lines of what, of what boats did. Let me see. This is uh, no, you're probably going to do something along the lines of, um, I got just the right one. Oh, here we go. This is the picture that I always come back to. And that is, this is the guy's, um, hey, 812, hang on one sec. This is the guy who has six plants under his canopy. And what did I do? I told him to add three more plants. And now it looks like this. So you have to grow a plant, one plant that fills up this whole space. I mean, if you want a pound dry, you have to grow three pounds wet. So you have to fill this entire canopy up four by four, one foot deep. And that way when they double during flower, it'll be two feet deep. So you have to grow a monster fucking plant. And when we talk about monster plants, it's a very simple process. There is nothing you can do that speeds up the actual growth of the plant. So here, this is what they look like at the end of one week. This is what they look like at the end of week two. This is what they look like at the end of week three. This is what they look like at the end of week four. Now, this is week four and this, that's week four and this is week 10. So I'm just saying, it's not like you're going to be able to veg for three weeks. So even though you have a three light rotation, I just want you to understand that you're going to have to grow a 500 watt. You're going to have to veg a 500 watt plant for, you know, it's going to be 10 weeks old. 
You're going to put it in flour. You're going to trellis it out. You're going to start flowering at 500 watts, and then in four weeks, you'll turn it up to 600 watts. I mean, that's what you're talking about. So when, we, so when you worry about all these other things, I don't hear a guy who thinks he's going to be vegging for 10 weeks. I don't, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you have. No, yeah, you're right. Like, so what are you thinking now? Because, see, yeah, because my, my thing is I wanted to run, I wanted to run seven plants under the 1,000-watt light and do the and do the the, the four week veg or a, a eight week veg um, off of like like I said general hydroponic specs. I didn't understand that you know they ran off the three gallon buckets, but yeah, that kind of that changes things for me. It really does. Um, and then another quick question to add on to that. Like yesterday we spoke about watering very briefly. Um, I know there's a lot of weird things out there for people, you know, different recommendations on when you should water and how much you should water. What is, how do you water your plants? What, what tells you your plant needs water? You, you must lift it. You must lift it. That's the end of the discussion for me. You know when there's this much milk left in the jug in the fridge, you should know when your plant needs to be watered. Now, that said, there are, there are, there are the edges of, of that. You should not be in a bucket so small that your plant needs to be watered every 24 hours. If your plant needs to be watered every 24 hours because she falls over, you are in way too small of a bucket. You are way too extreme in terms of the bucket size versus the plant. You should have transplanted a while ago. So there's one edge. Another edge is if you're in a bucket so big that there's more soil facing the light than plant. I mean, that dude had a three inch plant in an eight gallon bucket. I mean, that dude. Yeah. This is, that's a seven. That's a seven gallon bucket. This dude had, this dude had, do you know what I mean? This guy had one plant. So yeah. clearly, clearly, turn your... Oh, hey, I've got two calls on this. Hey, both of you guys got to make sure your computers are off. 812, hang on a sec for me. So clearly, um, you know what I mean? Like, clearly, this could be in a one-gallon bucket. So there's this, there's this argument that I always make with you guys. You don't... Hey, you know what? Actually, 812... Let me see. Um, A one two. Um, let me let me see. Can I? Um, I don't know how to hang up on just eight one two. We got a. I, I won't take two calls like that again. Sorry, eight one two. Hang on one sec. Okay, so if you are in the wrong size bucket and you don't have to water for two weeks, think about all the light you're throwing at the soil. That's like shifting from second into third at 900 and going down to 300. Is it possible? Yes. Does it work right? No. I mean, if you're going to drive the freeway to work, you get in your car in the morning, you warm it up, you put it in sixth gear. Why not? Why don't you do that if you're going to be in sixth gear on the freeway? So, there's this relationship. So jumping to a five gallon or a three gallon off the gate is probably not a good idea. I'm just saying that everybody's tendency is to rush things. What are you, why are you rushing? Like if you're worried about the amount of money you're going to save by, by, okay. So uh, if you're worried about the amount of money that you're going to save on buying an LED. Oh my God, I'm going to save all this money on electricity. Oh my God, I'm going to save all this money on heat. If you're worried about all that money that you're going to save, then why do you transplant so early? Like I got this guy here um, and, and I got to apologize to Oted Bear. I was snapping at him and trying to be funny and I, I, I didn't come off that way. And I did want to apologize if I happened to catch Oted Bear on the show. Um, I modified my answer, Oted. You were correct. The pain meds make you a little crazy. I apologize, but oh, Ted, here's a guy who makes the same investment, the same argument about LEDs that everybody makes. 
The guy on the YouTube video we were talking about yesterday had two PLC 600s, which are 800 each, $1,600 investment. Let's say he got the deal at 350 each. The PLC draws 600 watts, and let's assume it can replace 1,000 at 12 hours per day. He saves 9.6 kilowatts. Here's a guy who's arguing electricity again. Like, dude, cannabis is 2,000 bucks a pound. It costs 250 bucks to grow it. Why the fuck are you telling me about $4 in electricity? And then that's $1.25 a day. Three cents. Running 300, that's about 450 bucks. Let's say he replaced his HP, HPS bulbs every 12 months and spends 175 on the pair. And in less than 1.5 years, I'm just saying I don't love or hate LEDs. Here's a guy who's trying to quantify it. Listen, cannabis costs $250 a pound to grow with the cheapest equipment. If all but is the same, you can't quantify a larger buy-in. And all, all I'm suggesting is this is the same argument that everybody always makes. You try to rationalize monetarily a decision. And unfortunately for cannabis, soon as you try to rationalize something based on money cost, you're, you, you are not a person that can grow because this isn't about that. I'm telling you that the cheapest equipment grows the same cannabis. So as soon as you think you're smarter than mother nature, you're going to fail, right? And we saw the Titanic smarter than mother nature. Yeah. It failed. So as soon as you try to be smarter than mother nature, you you're the type of guy who tells, who, who complains about food, bitches at the server and sends it back. What do you think is going to happen to your food? And I find that the people who come in here and mouth off have bigger problems than their grow. And this is a very simple thing. And soon as you think you're smarter than the guy who does it and the guy who justifies it. And when you, you know, when I justify it, it's straight math. If it's half as big, it's twice as bright. I mean, this is just straight math. I'm telling you that rather than spending money on the nonsense, if you were to leave your plants in the smaller container for 10 days more, what do you think's going to happen? Going to grow more roots. My favorite one is always the guy who tells me I veg with 24 hours of light. And I go, yeah. And it's always the same argument from me. And I go, yeah, but do you get that bucket full of roots before you transplant? And they always tell me the same thing. Oh, hell yeah. I got a bucket so full it's going to explode. And I go, that's my point. Exactly. It's that I get a bucket full of roots at 18, six. So why are you spending 33% more? Like I'm getting the same results that you are for 33% less electricity. And that's just on the grow. It doesn't matter if you grow with an LED. It doesn't matter if you grow with a T5. It doesn't matter if you grow with a DE, a CMH. And L. It doesn't matter what light you grow with. The fact is, if you want more roots, you could just wait three more days and the roots would get three days bigger. You don't need to increase the light. You don't need to increase the food. You don't need to do anything. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> When we talk about the relationship of how to water and how to feed, if you put a plant, X plant, in a one gallon bucket, you come out of a 16 ounce red cup and you put it in a one gallon bucket. It is 128 ounces of soil. You went from a 16 to a 128. What's that? Eight, eight times, it's eight times bigger. So if you were watering every three days, eight times more media, you should be watering every 12 days, let's say. Now, four weeks later in the same bucket, if the plant is considerably bigger, it should be consuming the same amount of water considerably faster. This is no different than a power band with RPMs in a vehicle. If you shift at 1500, you're out of the power band, you're out of the mileage band. If you shift at 2300, you know when the little arrow comes on, then you're in the mileage. If you shift at 4900, you're in the power band. I'm just saying that as you go through the bucket and the plant gets bigger, I don't know how anybody can expect. I mean, you look at the manufacturer labels on the nutrients, NPK. What do you think they make all the nutrients out of? They make them out of NPK. I don't know if they actually make them out of raw solubles. <laughs> I don't know if they all buy from raw soluble and just mix their own. But I will tell you, there are, there are <laughs> websites that take raw soluble, put them in their own packages and sell them. What you have to understand is that that nutrients are based on and we had talked about and this is why I brought it up earlier. 
I, I just want to point out that when we talk about the size of the plant, and I brought this up a lot of times, this plant right here is 10 weeks old. So it's 10 weeks old. It's one plant in a, I think it's a 15 gallon, it's a 20 gallon bucket. It's one plant, 10 weeks old in a 20 gallon bucket. My question always is this. These plants are 10 weeks old. Here are, oh, dude, I still have 812. I've got another call. 812, dude, are you still on the phone? Yeah. Not oh. five ones on so yeah okay eight, <laughs> okay eight one two i forgot you were on the phone i got five one oh calling listen five one oh hang on a sec eight one two i'm still i'm still on your call i have not forgot mostly i actually did forget but you're you're still there so we're doing good okay these plants are 10 weeks old also my question always is mm -hmm. do you feed they're, they're 10 weeks old and if we follow the all of the nutrient schedules, they are based on what? What week you're in? Four week veg, eight week flower. Now this is a hydro system with 15 plants per two lights. It was a four week veg with an eight week flower. So my question is, do you feed these plants in flower that are the same age as 10 week old plants? I mean, these are four week veg, six week flower. And this is and this is 10 week old all in veg. When we know the answer is no, one for no other reason than we don't feed veg plants like flower plants. And frankly, plants that are almost finishing require a flush, these are still growing. So under no circumstance, under no circumstance, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, uh, if you guys have been following my back problems, You're it fine. turns out I hurt my butt and coughing flexes those muscles. Gah. So, again, there, there is, uh, there, sometimes there's a reason to be in third gear, and sometimes there's a reason to be in fifth gear. And you could be doing the same mileage, per, miles per hour. You could be getting, all I'm saying is that there's, if you change any one component, everything changes. So, I can't imagine how the fuck... A nutrient company has the balls to tell you because we look at, uh, we look at, uh, you know, we look at all of these comments and everybody's like, oh, I've got this light. Oh, I've got that light. Oh, I'm watering this often. I'm in this size of a bucket. I'm in that size of a bucket. <coughs> and you know my opinion on LEDs and you know there's a right way to do it <clears throat> and there's a successful way to do it. And then a lot of you say, oh, but there's lots of ways to do this. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I can put a plant in a 10 gallon pot, never transplant again, and I can grow start to finish, enjoy myself, get a yield and not have any problems. But that's not the correct way to do it if you're looking for yield. If you want the least amount of effort, hell yeah, <clears throat> put it in a 10 gallon bucket Put the 1,000-watt light 10 feet away, never lower it again. But suddenly, you're paying for an enormous... You're throwing 900 watts at the floor for the first four weeks. <coughs> Hang on. So I'm just saying, as soon as you start to talk about operational efficiency, an LED goes out the window because in terms of operational efficiency, the best thing you could do is leave the plant under a little less light for a little longer. And if you're not doing less and leaving the plant in the smaller bucket for just a little longer, or you're in a bucket other than you're watering once a week at the start of the bucket and twice a week at the end. <coughs> if, <coughs> mm. Mm. if you're outside of any of those ranges, then you're experimenting. And soon as you experiment, you're not gaining experience. You're just learning how to fail because you're just being successful is a very narrow trajectory. It's a very narrow trajectory where everything has to go, where everything has to go right for this to go right. 
And soon as you step off that trajectory or any one component of the entire process is wrong, like an unrealistic expectation on the size of the plant or an unrealistic expectation of the formulas on the back of the nutrient, how can you succeed if you start off with an unrealistic expectation? You will make decisions based on a faulty baseline. And if you make decisions based on a faulty baseline, what can we predict about your success? Oh, dude, it's zero. It approaches zero. That's why I'm such a stickler for you guys understanding that it is better to leave your plant under less light for another week than it is to put it under too much light too soon because it takes 10 times longer to fix a problem than it does to cause it. And if your light's under a little, if your plant's under a little too much light, a little too little light for a week, you'll be like, oh shit, it's paling. <clears throat> you'll be like, time, then you make a note and next time you, you do it one week sooner. But if you put it under too much light one week early, the fuck are you trying to save money on electricity, power, heat, nutrients? Now, your question was about nutrients originally, and this was my point. A good grower this is npk let me this is uh this is npk this is and i'm going to show you guys real soon how to use this this is the base npk but this is this is all of the nutrients in gh3 part it's all of the nutrients in gh3 part broken into and then some because there's enzymes there's molasses there's b1 and yucca which is an absorption agent uh, b1 with yucca uh, for an absorption agent for the through the roots i mean they've got humic and fulvic and powder so it's everything they have broken down individually so you could use this all individually but again what are we talking about here? So this is the example, and, and this is where, and this is where that NPK University just drives me fucking nuts, because here's the reality: if you're growing these ten-week veg plants, they're ten weeks old. Okay, let's say you're going to give them a thousand ppm. Boom, five hundred and two fifty p, two fifty k. Okay, now who else has that? Who else has a formula similar to that? Well, I'll tell you another one that I like, and this is super easy because it's just the one part. It's a grow. Listen, here is Fox Farm Grow. Fox Farm Grow. It's a 644. 600 ppm, 400 ppm, 400 ppm. Great. So we would make one gallon. 600 ppm, 1,000, 1,400 ppm. Boom. We add a second gallon. Now we got two gallons of 644 at 700 ppm but we had to pick an amount of calories that was appropriate for the plant that was appropriate for the plant because this plant wants more n than pk because it's in veg and it wants more overall because it's bigger we have not we have not talked about frequency yet now these plants here are halfway through flower. So let's say we were going to feed them. I couldn't imagine. Well, it's in hydro. So the hydro might be 1500 because there's many plants pulling from one res. But <clears throat> in terms of how many they want, I would say these things want 600. Okay. So we would do uh, 250, 250, 100. Boom. Oh, sorry. We would do 250, 250, 100. That would be a 2.5, 2.51, or a 255. Why? Because we want more PK in flower. So what we've done is we've determined, based on the size of our plant, about how much food they should be getting. Boy, that sounds a lot more reasonable than these vendors giving us a schedule. Like, how the fuck do they know if you've got 15 plants per two lights, if you've got 100 plants per two lights, if you've got three plants per two lights? How do they know how long your veg is? How do they know how long your flower is? How do they know anything about your garden? That's why I tell you quality is based on grower talent because if your dumbass blindly follows one of these thousand watt 
directions and you've got a compact fluorescent 200 watt if you've got a four foot eight bulb t5 how would you justify i mean it's three if it's a 400 watt versus a thousand then you're feeding three times the amount the second time you feed three times the amount well there's literally five times the amount what the plant wants inside the media because it didn't go anywhere so when you ask me what the correct amount of water is listen i can grow in a bucket with no holes in it i don't need any runoff you water till the bucket's full you can't figure out the bucket's full and there's water sitting on the bottom you can't work that out and so i'm just suggesting if you're the kind of person that can't work out dude it's a house fucking plant water it until the bucket is full and then don't water it until it needs to be watered again. That's the gray area in between. Then based on bucket size, again, based on bucket size and the length of, you know, you're gonna be in each bucket for four weeks. Based on where in that four weeks you are, based on the frequency of the watering, but your feeding schedule is based on does the plant need it? The same way your watering schedule is based on does the plant need it? How many PPMs is also based on the light. So if you're in week 10, Let's say four week veg, six week flower. You're looking at, you're looking at this picture. Four week veg, six weeks of flower. Okay, it might be a thousand ppm, and this veg plant might be at a thousand ppm too, but they won't be the same formula, and they're not going to be the same watering frequency. They're not going to be the same feeding frequency. So I need you to be way more fluid about this than micro focusing way more fluid see what i'm saying yeah okay i'd like to cap that with one more thing if you okay. can put if you can put your light so far away that you don't have to worry about the heat or your plants if you're in a bucket so big and your light is so far away that It'll be a week before you have to go in there. Dude, that other caller was top was LST every three days. The fuck are you doing every three days with your plant? They don't grow like that. Soon as somebody tells you they're doing something that makes you go, damn, you go, okay, it's already a failure. Guy's got no idea, and we could just keep asking questions, and we'll just keep finding things that are wrong with the garden the whole way through. Everywhere you look, you'll find something wrong with a guy's garden who's that involved with the process because oh all right eight four seven two don't forget you gotta like the channel sub subscribe to the channel like listen i don't care anymore i'm i'm off that i don't even care anymore you see my sponsors behind me i'm not it doesn't even i appreciate the text but it's not even a battle i want to fight um okay i understand so sorry i got one of the other callers so anyway my, my point here is that you have to adjust both for bucket size, when in that bucket that you are, how far away the light is, and if you do too much, you're worried about the wrong thing. You just can't, you just can't, you see what I'm saying? It's, you're micro-focused. It doesn't. Yeah. So buy yourself a one part. That's why I wanted a general like nutrients I could just follow and not have to have an issue. But I get what you're saying that you're right. They don't know what you're growing. They don't know how long you're growing or what, you know, me even medium you're growing in. Uh, so I, I get right. what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, now, in now your that book, you, do you cover, do you cover, you know, the, what you were talking about, how you can literally add, you know, your N, P and K, you know, yourself based off the plant size and what it needs. Yes, sir. I will show you the picture. I think I can show you the exact pick boom here is here is a flowering nutrient profile notice there's more pk than n it accounts for the mag here is here is a nutrient profile for grow notice there's more n than pk i also go over how much and when and the relationship to light because i tell you this is all about the relationship with the light so here's a here's a graph <clears throat> if you were growing with a 1000 watt light you would be at 1000 ppm here uh, when you're at about week six flower that's why i always caution you okay. if you were to if you were to try to grow this plant this little plant down here 
if you were to feed this plant this yeah. many nutrients, what do you think would happen? And if this plant actually did want this many nutrients, then technically we would have to take the line and move it up here. Why? Because, well, if this plant wants this many nutrients, then a plant 10 times the size is going to want 10 times the nutrients. All we do is increase the slope. We don't change nutrients because it's all NPK. All I'm saying is that there is a relationship both between the bucket and the plant size and we're is it a four week veg eight week veg do you have an eight week veg plant do you have a eight week old plant that's two weeks in veg and six weeks in flower all of these things are relative once you get the idea it all comes into play that they're all relative so it's very dangerous now all of that said you were, i brought all of this up to make one point and that is <clears throat> soon as you're a grower and i just want to point this out to everybody every manufacturer soon as you're a grower that deals with samples you're going to fail because good growers i just want to point out that if i had a thousand watt flower and a 600 watt veg this bottle would last me three harvests for twenty dollars I would buy the gallon for 50 bucks because flowering is generally twice as long as veg. Either, even if you veg for eight weeks and flower for eight weeks, the plants are bigger during the second half of the 16 week life cycle. Therefore, there's more area under the curve. Therefore, I buy my CalMag by the gallon, my Bloom by the gallon, my Grow by the quart. So, if you once okay. i know how many like i get my grow boss mega meter the water says it's 30 i put a tablespoon of this in it says it's 165 i know a tablespoon of this is 135 per tablespoon that bottle costs 20 dollars in my store it's probably 17.95 on ebay the probability of you switching just for let's just say the the same probability you're going to switch nutrients only one of three things can happen you get the same results you get better results or you get worse results so there's two probabilities there's 66 percent where your garden will stay the same or worse so changing nutrients will possibly one third and that's after you do it three times and you make sure that you're using the right amount of nutrients there is a one in three possibility that it will increase your yield so soon as you're the guy who comes in and switches nutrients as soon as you're the guy who comes in and asks for a sample i already know the good growers don't ever switch i mean they know they don't even measure ppms they just count globs Soon as you micro focus no, on a yeah. nutrient, soon as you don't interpret, in, in, soon as you don't in, in, ex, interpret every all the possibilities into your scenario, soon as you assume that the vendors, like you know they you know they misrepresent the mileage on cars because trucks come with those tiny tires. You don't get the same mileage when you put a truck tire on your truck. So in what case do the vendors tell you the truth? And here you are taking for gospel with no thought of your own. All right, listen, let me get to the next call. You see where I'm going with this 951? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I appreciate uh, it, man. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate the call. Okay, so I've got 812. Good morning, 812. Thank you for being so patient. Bah, I lost 812. Oh, maybe because I added 812 to the Skype call listen i i'm not i don't care what the fuck you do that's why when i get this thing right here that says when i get comments like this right here that says this dude is such an egotistical narcissistic douchebag 425 hang on one sec for me that's why when i get a guy no. that says this dude is such a narcissistic egotistical douchebag I got to ask you, you know, what do you, what do you think you're doing? You think you're telling me something I don't know? You're telling me, you, you, you're giving me information that's like unsolicited. I'm really not interested. Clearly, if I'm the person you're describing, I'm not interested. And yet you're giving me information 
that has, well, frankly, it's just a waste of your time. I personally think it's funny because, well, you're watching my videos enough to know who I am. Well, the character I play on YouTube. You're watching my videos. I don't know who you are. You know who I am, or you think you know who I am. And yet, you're, you're, you see what I'm saying? Like, you've got, I don't think you understand the priorities. And when people talk to me about those kind of, when you have those kinds of, when you have that inappropriate communication, when you don't know whether to censor yourself or Eminem, I am whatever you say I am. Why are you bothering to tell me I am narcissistic? Why would you tell a narcissistic person they're narcissistic? I mean, like, <laughs> thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you for watching me and telling me that you know who I am because I'm narcissistic. When you don't understand those kind of relationships and you inappropriately put your information in there because you don't know the right way to behave, you're a right fighter. Right fighters are micro focusers. They tend to be micro focusers. So if you're a right fighter, you're not going to be growing cannabis. And so I just want to point out that I may be an egotistical, narcissistic douchebag, but I just want to point out I'm also right. I mean, great. I appreciate you telling me, but what you didn't say was I was wrong. Woo! And that's all I pretend to be when it comes to doing this grow boss thing. I really don't want to be your friend. We're not going to know each other. I want you guys to buy my books. I mean, I want you guys to, when you come in my store because you trust me because of this relationship, I don't want you to ask, to ask me a bunch of questions. I mean, every time I do this, I save myself five questions from a customer that comes to my store. <laughs> I'm going to have to answer your questions anyway. And frankly, if you, if you have a good time and you pizza instead of French fry and you have a good time, it's better for both of us. I'm just saying it's, it's easier for me if everybody wins. I mean, that's my motivation. Next is <clears throat> once I build that trust, do we sell a lot of product? You know what I mean? Like I go through a lot of product, my books, I mean, we don't sell, I don't sell this shit, but I, you know, my books and stuff, we go through a lot of product. People come to my store from all over because, well, frankly, I don't lie to you and I want you to be successful. Okay, 510, call me back in a sec. 425, what can I do for you? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Grill Boss. I got a question for you on uh, climate control. Okay. Um, I got your book a couple months ago. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm growing, do following, mo you know, all your suggestions. Um, I've got a two light retriever set up in the garage, uh, two car garage standard. I'm up in the Seattle area. Don't have to worry about heat much more than like a month and a half, two months in the summer. I'm wondering if I would be better off. I've got the ability I can do like a window unit and cool the entire garage, or if I should get a portable and pipe it into the, the tent itself. Cool the entire garage. Okay. My wife will like that too because the dogs are in here and they'll be happy. <laughs> so, okay. Now, I'd how much light? ACs are cheaper. How much I'm light sorry. do you have? How much light do you? What size is the tent? And how much light do you have? I've got two five by fives. Uh, one of them is a gorilla, gorilla tent with a eight foot or seven foot eleven ceiling. I'm using that for flower. Both of them have thousand watt. Uh, uh, but uh, my flower right now is turned down to four hundred. My uh, flower tent right now has flowers in it that I didn't have your book and had the light right on top of them, and I hammered them, and uh, yeah. Oh, dude, that's so funny, right? Uh, all right, 205 and 510, I'll get back to you guys in a sec. But, okay, so you see my point. You'll need the 600-watt veg. You'll need a 1,000-watt in flower. And those will be like gears one, two, three for veg, gears four, five, six for flower. You'll get on a two light rotation. <clears throat> you might as well cool the garage. You'll suck the air out of the tents into, you'll suck the air out of the tents into the garage. It'll get cool. It'll get dehumidified. You buy that little cheap AC. I mean, your garage isn't sealed, so you'll still get CO2. You don't have to worry about it. It sounds to me like uh, four happy people plus an inexpensive AC. Well, two happy people, two happy dogs plus an AC. 
inexpensive AC. It sounds like a win-win-win all the way around. Exactly. And then one more question for you, Go Boss. I was listening to your video. My wife was out in the garage when I was playing it, and she heard you say, I can't buy nothing else until I maximize what I have. <laughs> so I oh, haven't yeah. gotten CO2 yet. <laughs> yeah, that's I, why. Uh, that's why. CO2? <laughs> that's why I tell you don't bring your wife shopping. Right. <laughs> Can I talk her into CO2, or do I have to wait until I? Okay. So the thing about CO2 is, in your particular case, you would have to fill the entire garage with CO2. Now, in a garage, it's not like a bedroom. In a bedroom, if you seal off the, the supply port for cold air into the room, the air in the room stays pretty stagnant. If you were to buy a dual duct AC, you would have to vent it into, uh, uh, you know what? Actually, I'll show you something. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Okay, this. I think this should work for me. This. Pa. Um. This is a one duct AC. If you put this in your garage, you can put a Y on this end, on, on, the, on the supply end, and split it into both tents. So you would just be pumping cold air into the tents. But you would be making hot air that you had to deal with as well. If you buy the window unit, right. you sort of cool the whole garage. If you buy um, this, if you buy this this is a dual duct ac if you buy the dual duct ac that's like a window unit but it's more expensive it's not as efficient but if you were inside the house you would probably use this unit now you're in a garage where you could put a hole in the wall brilliant put a 150 and dollar home depot window unit in there and cool the whole garage now because you're in the garage what we're really talking the co2 what we're really talking about is how much air leaves the garage if a moderate amount of air leaves the garage then you're getting fresh co2 it would be your responsibility <clears throat> to get the most you can from your light if the garage was very sealed then you would have to add some sort of co2 but it wouldn't matter where you added because it would get sucked back into the tent, back into the garage, out of the tent, back into the garage, back into the tent, back into the garage. You'd suck it through the tent. It would circle. It would pick up cold air and CO2 in the garage. So it really, the CO2 really depends on the sealed aspect of the garden, not what you want to do. Now, even if, you're, even if your room leaks, I mean, even if your garage leaks, you could still add CO2. It's always a benefit added in the bottom corner because the CO2 receptors are on the bottom of the leaf. So you'd put it in the bottom corner and you would try to remove as little air from the tent as possible. So the CO2 stayed in there as long as possible. Because think about it, a four inch fan is 200 CFM. A five by five by seven tent is 25, 175 cubic feet. Two five by five by seven tents is... 350 cubic feet that means every two minutes a four inch fan will empty all the air out there's no time for co2 to do its thing so you would need to vent as little air as possible to keep the cool in and as as much co2 you know what i mean like to into both tents so yes you could add co2 but you would sort of have to add it with like a thorough understanding. I mean, you could do a burner. Burners are cheap. You can always get like a used burner and a propane tank. I mean, a propane tank and a burner, uh, shit. That's probably 20 of those 20 pound CO2 tanks. There's a lot of CO2 in a propane burner. And because you're in a garage and cooling isn't going to be the thing, I mean, you could just add a burner to the CO2. In the long run, the burner is much cheaper. In the short run, setting up a burner 
cost as much as setting up uh, anything, you know, a, a CO2 tank. You buy the propane is cheaper. The, you know, the propane is 35 bucks. The CO2 tank empties 100 at my cost. So it's the same cost on the buy-in, but then you do have a little more heat. But a burner is sort of inappropriate for a 1,000 and a 600 watt. So you're still in the range of, do you really even need it in veg? Because you're putting it in flour. So CO2 is really, really not really necessary where you're at. I've got a canister I'm using right now, and that's been been working fine. So I, I'm after listening to what you just said, I'm probably gonna stick with that. What's a canister? Yeah, uh, one of the enhancers. I'm oh, sorry, uh, one of the enhancers. Yeah, the T. The, I don't remember the name of it. The T and G, T and B. Oh yeah, T and B. Yeah, yeah. Another great yeah. CO2 producing product. It's just right for enjoying yourself. Something like that. It's just right. All right. Does that does that get All your right. questions for you? So much. Thank you again, as always. Thank you much. Have a good morning. You too. I appreciate the phone call. All right. The number is 84 Grow Boss. If you have questions, don't forget to like the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. I just can't get that right. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. Um, green pads rock. What's up, P Jammer? Feel better, P Jammer. Morning shots of apple cider vinegar. Wah. Mm -mm. Yeah, so. Oh, there we go. Rescued from boredom. 205, good morning. How you doing, sir? I am feeling much better today. What's going on with you? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I just got a couple questions. Um. Of course, you know, when you're learning about certain things, especially this in particular, you're going to get a lot of different research, and you don't want to try to get a lot of missed and false information. Am I right or wrong on that? Some people, no, 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 no. Some people love failing. They come in here specifically, and they're like, don't worry about it. I'm just, I just want to learn how not to do this. And other people want to just win. So... You teach their own. Okay. Okay. So my question is, um, well, right now I kind of already know what I'm dealing with. I'm looking at my grow box now, and I already know that is. I need to measure it because actually, I, I know it's going to be a lot of questions that I really probably ain't going to be able to ask because really I haven't measured and thought out how big my my grow box is and all this because I know you're doing the math and all that. And I've been thinking on that, too, because I see, um, you know, with different size boxes, you were saying that, well, anyway, with a small box, you were saying if you got too much light in a small box, that the plant is getting or the plants are getting too much light. Is that right? I said was you can you can decrease the light or increase the canopy. They both have the same effect. Uh -huh. If you double the plants, they get half the light. Half the light may still be too much, but if you have 10 times the plant, they get one-tenth the light. I'm saying there's just a relationship between the two of them. Now, in terms of the grow box, I just want to point out mm -hmm. that I, I specifically have a video, and it's called The uh -huh. Number One Way to Fail When Growing Cannabis, and it is to buy okay. any of these 508. Hang one sec. It is to buy... 508 hey 508 hang on one sec and it is to buy any one of these all in one all in one grows the number one way to fail <clears throat> is to spend the most money hey you got to turn your radio down hey turn your computer hey, my down. Radio is down other no no i got another okay, 508 508 oh fuck it. hey 508 turn your computer down how can i it's down okay um Hello? okay so uh, you know, 508, you're going to have to call me back because when this guy hangs up, I think it's going to hang up on you. So call me back in a sec. Okay, okay so. Okay, I ain't going to hold her. No, 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 no. Hang on one sec. I got you. Okay, so you're. So my observation okay. is this. As soon as you said grow closet, I picked grow box. I picture one of these things. There is no way to succeed with one of these. And if you want to, the number one way to fail growing cannabis is to not only fail, but to spend the most money failing. And that's these systems.
So uh, in terms of that, so yeah, measure your space. Hey, listen, I appreciate the call. I got a couple of calls. Thank you. Um, then th th what I want you to do is measure the space. Think about how much yield you want and then see if that yield will even fit in your grow space <clears throat> because you may want a lot. But if you have a little space, and then depending on the space that you have, you may want a small LED, you may want a bigger T5, you may want a 1,000 watt light, you may want 10 1,000 watt lights. All I'm saying is, you got to know that space. So measure your space, 508, call me back when you got that, um, and you sort of have the question that you're going to ask me in mind. And then 205, I had a couple of other callers that were were ringing through um, bah, I'm digging my green pads Denali princess there you go yeah 72 degrees the thing about setting your room temperature to just 72 degrees is the better the the sh the better the AC, the shorter it runs. It doesn't have enough time to pull the humidity out. Five oh eight. Good morning. Good morning uh, from the East Coast. Um, I'm in the process of watching your Bushman series, which I'm really enjoying. You did a phenomenal job with that. I highly recommend it for anybody to watch it. And I especially like that you um, mi you mix in grow growing indoors and outdoors because I do both. But anyway, so my question is, is I just got back from the West Coast and helped a, a harvest. And they had the large plants like the Bushman. And then around the east and the south side, they had these smaller uh, three, maybe, yeah, no, no more than three foot, two or three foot plants. And <clears throat> what I was really amazed about was that these small plants had the most enormous colas that I'd ever seen in my life. And I'm just curious why the Bushman grows the bigger plants. And if you could tell me the, um, you know, the pros and cons. And because, like, you want the lower grade bud because these <laughs> smaller ones had absolutely nothing but big holes, you know, no low grade buds on it. So I'm just kind of curious about that. And, and that's a... <clears throat> That's a completely legitimate question. Let me make this observation. Um, it, there's in a bigger plant, you get more bud. But sometimes the smallest spiders and the smallest scorpions and the smallest snakes have the most potent venom. Why? Because they they're not investing in as large a plant. So. If you have twice the plant, I mean, it, it may not be able to generate the same amount of THC. A small plant might be able to generate 28%, but because it's bigger, it might be 26%. So there are various things that can affect size and quality. And in the Bushmaster's case here, oh, shit, like, you know, like his tent got tore up. And they got, you know, there were so many things that happened in uh in 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 this that it, you know there were so many problems that happened even though they weren't too many nutrients or too much light I, I, you know it, it also depends on the size of the size of the plant also depends on how many you're allowed to have the bushmaster was trying to keep that 99 plant limit and so there's also how much time you have to veg outside. For instance, if you veg for eight weeks indoors, that's twice the electricity of a four week indoor. And so sometimes you want to put them outside and sometimes people want to try to get two harvests in. So there are various factors that can play into the indoor outdoor situation. And then he was still setting up his grow the first round. So in this case, you know, it takes three rounds to sort of dial it in. And and the, you saw the construction got better. So there were a lot of factors that didn't even have anything to do with the actual plants. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, the other, maybe I haven't gotten to it in, in the videos, but the other thing that boggles my mind, just coming back from California, I left 
and the humidity was 16%. How on earth do they dry a bud in 16% humidity? Like, you know, mass quantities, it's being dried in these huts. Like, I just don't understand that. How does that work? At some point, um, if you don't get the mold and mildew, you can dry it almost as slow as you want. The trick is you've got to control the dehydration such that it doesn't take too long. I mean, if you could dehydrate a plant to 65% in one second and not affect anything, but the process is such that they may take it all indoors. I mean, even the Bushmaster had so much so much canopy that he had so much bud that he had to take it sorry let's find uh he was drying it i mean he was drying it indoors on these racks i appreciate the call and the questions thank you and here's the bushmaster well those are all the but here's the bushmaster no that's not the bushmaster doing that here's the dry room here is the dry room getting filled up and it turns out that it required a dehumidifier i think at some point too here it comes yeah i mean like he filled up this whole room and you gotta remember that there was that fan filter right there was a fan filter in here too i mean he just keeps uh he just keeps going out right he's taking out he's chopping down the plant and you know, the room just keeps getting more and more full of buds. But at some point, depending on how long the AC runs, the longer the AC runs, the more humidity it takes out of the air, the more, the less you have to worry about. So there comes this point where you have to bring the buds, um, if you have to bring them inside, you know, it, it's like anything else. If you're willing to build a greenhouse to grow cannabis outdoors, Buying a dehumidifier and putting it in a room doesn't seem like that's such a, you know, such a stretch. It just doesn't seem like that, that wholly unreasonable a thing. You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, to everybody seems to micro focus. Some people seem to micro focus on the, on the drying. Some people seem to micro focus on the wavelength. Some people seem to micro focus on the nutrients. I'm just saying that as soon as you micro focus on anything, you've sort of lost scale and scope of what this is. I mean, it's a house plant. It isn't anything more. I, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not telling you it's all the same shit. So you buy my shit because it's different shit. <laughs> I'm just saying that I don't care which shit you use. Just like whether it was the size of the plant like three callers ago, and he was like, I'm just going to follow their schedule. I don't care if you have a 1,000 watt LED, a 1,000 watt DE, a 1,000 watt SE, a 1,000 watt CM8. I don't, I don't care. If you have the 1,000 watt version, the 600 watt version, the 400 watt version, all I'm saying is you have to account for all the variables that go in to your version of the equipment. And if you want to tell me that you want to be at 500 PPM at week five, great. I know you're at a thousand watt light, but that doesn't tell me how long your veg was. So we still can't put you on plant count. So now we have to ask about plant count. Oh my God. I'm not saying that there's one way to grow. I'm saying that there's more ways, just like we started at the beginning of the video, it always circles back around. I'm just saying that there's more ways to fail than succeed. If nothing else as evidenced by the fact that more growers fail than succeed. That's all I'm saying. And that you have to drive your car the way your car was meant to be driv drove driven. I'm just saying that there comes this point where the grower has to interpret all of the products I sell in my store. And if you were to take whichever one enzyme, 
one hormone, one of whatever, and I've done that before in the show, you know, in other shows where I, I pulled up the one of everything to start to finish. You still have to interpret how to use them. It still doesn't have anything to do with the manufacturer. I mean, it comes to your oil change. It says 7,000 miles. You do it when you want to do it. You know what I mean? Like everybody seems to really pick and choose. Oh, I think this is important, but the grow boss was wrong about this and this, or I think that was important, but not this and that. And you guys come in and I'm like, you're selectively death. Either it's all right or none of it's right because this is a 12 week process. And if anything goes wrong during any time of this, it takes 10 times longer to recover than it does to create a problem. And by that time, you might as well have thrown the plants away because you could have started new ones that would have been better or you could have chopped it down and saved the electricity and started new ones which would have been better. All I'm saying is, is if you were to bring me the correct equipment for your grow, using your equipment correctly is a very narrow trajectory to use your equipment correctly, right? Because if you have X equipment and you try to grow like Y, you're off the success arc. That's why there are very few people that succeed because not only do you have to have the right equipment, everything has to go right for this to go right. Because if everything doesn't grow right, it's... Oh, do I have a caller on? Somebody? No. Okay. Yeah, listen, great, Nate. When you guys come in my store, like, I, the guys with no questions, they only buy stuff like this because they already own their light. Maybe twice a year they'll replace a bulb because they're that good. But the guys who know how to grow buy significantly less product. I mean, if you buy Thermoflow ducting, if you buy Thermoflow ducting, you're literally never going to buy it again. It's three ply ducting. It's got the black on the inside. So it holds back the light transmission. It's got the mesh. So it doesn't blow out at any point into flower. And you get one of those heat blowouts that put hot air back in your room. I mean, it's $15 more and it's, it never blows out. But once you've set up your garden, you're never going to buy it again. It's like a Mondi dome. How many Mondi domes are you really going to need? Even if they last 12 months, I mean, you're going to grow for five years. So I'm just saying that there are very few products. Clonex solution, a baby food for your plants, the hygrometer green pad, use it. You know what I mean? During flower. Cause your veg isn't sealed microbes start to finish, except for the last two weeks, turbo cloner. Um, as we get better in the back of my store, um, we'll start to see that I'll have, I'll have more scenarios set up. So I'll be able to show you the two and three light rotations, because remember, nobody does hydro in a two light rotation. How the fuck would you veg for four weeks? Nobody, eight weeks. I mean, nobody does hydro in a two light rotation. You know what I mean? Like in a, in a two light rotation, you never do a sea of green. Because you don't, how a sea of green is a three day veg. If you've got an eight week flower and an eight week veg, how do you do a sea of green? There are all these rules that you got to navigate these ins and outs, bucket sizes. And I promise I'll be able to show you all of those bucket sizes way better when, oh, damn it. I just missed your call. Bah. I was hoping somebody would rescue me from me. Ah, I'm also out of bud. Bah. I also didn't eat breakfast. Uh, so whoever just called, call me back. I lollipop like work at work and I did it like the jungle boys. Okay. Lollipopping might've been going on longer than the jungle boys. I don't know, but I'm glad that you found lollipopping. Remember, it's not just lollipopping. It's lollipopping, topping, topping, super cropping. There are, they are all designed with similar goals in mind. Think about it. If you take a top, that is essentially a clone. But right below that top, there are two nodes that can become new tops. So if you take a clone, 
whether you keep the clone, dip it in Clonex gel or not. If you keep the clone, 205, hang on a sec. If you keep the clone, you physically lowered the plant, but you've also increased the tops. Now, if you were to take that same top and you were to pull it under the trellis and flip it up, you have now lowered the same branch, but you have not increased the top count, nor do you have a clone. I mean, they all achieve the same goal of either lowering the plant or getting more tops, but you use them in different ways in conjunction. Like, uh, like if you've got one of those short lower branches, you would probably lollipop it. You hold the top, strip all the bottom off, pull it right in the middle, take the top branch, pull it out, lay it down over here so the top shows up and strip off all the bottom. I just want to point out that when you low stress train and you take a long branch and you lay it down, there's one of two things can happen. If all of the tops turn up, that's low stress training. But if you were to take this top, because it's a runaway top, and you lay it down, and let's say you allow, like, you know, the top five nodes or so, and you strip off four or five nodes, why did you grow that much plant? Why did you grow enough plant that you had to lower it, let the top come back up, and strip off the bottom? I mean, we had a caller a few calls ago, 812, call me back in a sec, and... 205 hold on a sec and if it's going to okay. turn up then and you're going to do that why did you grow it so big if you guys are all worried about the light and the spectrum the length the length of the legs the actual legs of the plant um how big how big i'm just looking for a cutaway how big the legs grow down here like of all the problems the bushmaster had i just want to point out that that plant is like 10 feet around and it's got like eight legs down there there is nobody better at topping early and often than the bushmaster those plants are 10 feet around and they got like eight legs he does such a good job. And I will tell you again that the Bushmaster only tops and lollipops when he the clone goes into the red cup. The red cup goes into the one gallon. A month later, the one goes into the three. And then either if he veges longer, the three goes into the 10 or the three goes into the outdoors and he tops again. But he's only like super cropping like four or five times through this whole process and those fuckers are monsters nobody super crops like the bushmaster and here's i just always enjoy these videos when we walk through it i mean forget the disaster forget the rest of it and this is after actually that the windstorm happened and the plants laid down but look at those legs i mean right down right in bah Anyway, you see the legs that I'm talking about. Um, you know what? Here's another example that I find uh, super valuable for you guys to look at when we talk about the legs. Um, give me, give me one sec. The legs are super important because if you grow your plant with too much leg, you were in veg for too long because here's Thomas's grow. This is the guy I said, Hey, instead of doing six plants, do nine. And remember that was this picture. And then I said, instead of doing six plants, do nine. And then that was that picture. And then we always come back to this, which I talk about the depth of the canopy and how deep the canopy is. And how deep that canopy is, is super <clears throat> relevant. But when you look at, when you look at this guy's, the cutaway, you know, he does a pretty, he, he does a pretty good job of, this is the no canopy. And this is the canopy right here. He does a pretty good job of getting a lot of, getting a lot of branches started really early. And that width versus height 
is and that canopy and the length of those legs that's really where the skill comes in because right here if he were to top this one more time he would get like a bushmaster plant all right uh, 205 i don't remember how i got there 205 hey, hey. what can i do for you yes um i've been in the comment section too as well you i taught you the first time about the grow box but i got another question oh okay um, i'm trying to figure out I'm trying to figure out why is my tap water reading zero. Um, I'm using the blue lab meter with a PPM pen. Okay, and the first time I used it, it was working fine. And you know, they tell you, you don't have to be calibrated, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, the first PPM meter failed on me, so I had to send it back or whatever. And so they, they replaced it in my, my um, readings on everything else been fine. But I noticed on my tap water, it's been reading zero. And I even asked the people in the comment section, what skill should I be reading on? Because honestly, I've been um, using the 700 scale. And I know you're probably going to think I'm crazy. I also be uh, mixing my uh, advanced nutrients with my um, fast farm nutrients. But I don't put a lot of it in there. I know that may seem crazy. I don't know if you can do that. But that's what I've been doing in it not seeming to hurt anything, but I've just been curious about my tap water because I've been using spring water from Dollar Tree for the past seven months, if I can remember. And I'm just trying to see what's going on with my tap water. Okay, so you take your tap water, you pour all of your nutrients in there. Does the does the meter change or does it still say zero? Um. Well, let's, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to give it a try. So do I need to get like a what a one liter or what what she what do you want me to put it in and i put it in the thing it doesn't matter you think i should suggest it, it doesn't matter okay. you could take a cup of water and put and pour some nutrients in it the question is okay is the meter change because i don't believe tap water is zero i believe your meter yeah. may have died I don't care if you're on 500 scale or 700 scale. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of when I'm feeling better, I will give you guys a lecture on EC, PPM, and um, the 500, 700 scale. I'll give you, uh, we'll go over all that later when I'm feeling better about it. Okay. <clears throat> but and for uh, now, thing. does it change? Does the okay. PPM, is there anything you can do to make a change? Otherwise, the meter's dead. Well, yeah. What I, was, what I was trying to say, I wasn't trying to cut you off because you gave me some good information, but um, like I was saying, I use spring water from Dollar Tree. It's called Crystal Guys uh, uh, Natural Alpine Spring Water. So I've been using the spring water, and they've been reading it. Like once I put all my nutrients in this one gallon jug of, of water, 3.78 liter, and I read it, it'll say like 500. And, I've been, and that's on the 700 scale now. Now, I don't know if I should be on a 500 or a 700 or it doesn't really matter. The people told me in the comments, they said 500. They said particularly that should be better. But let me look at my box. Now, they're not burned or anything. Like on the tips, I see maybe just on the tips of them, they're a little brown. But that's it. Not, not nothing bad or anything. They look good. They're green. They look healthy. They can be a bigger, but, but, you know, overall, they look okay. Um, how old are your plants? Okay, let me look on there because I write on there how old are they. Nah, just pick um, like four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. How old are your plants? Um, they're about, well, I think they're since May the 12th, so, and they've been in bed for all this time on the 16 and 8 on, off or something like that. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So... You're since May, you said May, March, April, May, right? June, July, yeah, yeah, August, September, October. So your plants are five months old. So one of two uh -huh. things, either your plants are dead or they're eight feet tall. How big are your plants, sir? Eggs. I'm looking at them now. One of them. 
I don't know if it's, I had to out was trying to when you was when you had to call on I was trying to look for a tape measure. Not tape you don't need a tape measure, sir. No, sir, sir, you don't need a tape measure. It, it, your plants are okay. five months old. They should be if you're standing if you're standing up and you reach your arms straight up in the air. That's how tall your plant should be <clears throat> if they're five months old. So are your plants as high as your waist, as tall as your head, or are they two feet taller than you? Oh, they know they're nowhere near two feet taller than me. So you've killed they your plants. Actually... You've killed your plants. Your plants are dead. You cannot have you No, they're can... still alive. Okay. I can show you a picture of them if you want me to email them yeah. to you. Yeah. I'm looking at I accept. I, I accept. Okay. Degrees, sir. Don't care. Wait, wait, wait. Don't Please. care. Don't care. I call shenanigans. I want you to take a picture right now. Couple of pictures. I want to see. We okay. want to see the plant. We want to see the garden. We want to. You know what I mean? Let's show us. You know, send me four or five. Email me four or five pictures to the Grow Boss at Yahoo. The Grow Boss at Yahoo.com. God, I had so many pictures I was oh. going to go over today. I had so much stuff planned for today. Good grief. I never got to any of it. Okay, I just took Okay. It. Okay. I'm sorry. Hang No, no, it's okay. Hang up on the phone with me. Hang up okay. on the phone with me. You take care of the pictures. You do the pictures. Okay. And uh you I'm gonna take a picture of my box too, or well, the grow room particularly, so you can see that and you can tell me what I'm doing wrong, and we can go from there. Yeah, send me some pictures, okay. and uh, and we'll do it like that. Well, right. Okay, what's up with my with the uh, with my pot for me and being zero? If if it's read or write in the spring water, I just don't understand why is it reading zero in the tap water? If everything else is reading and write. Why is it reading wrong on um, the tap water? I don't know. It's not making any sense. It, it, I don't know. We have a couple of choices. One is the meter is bad. Two, um, you know, in terms of the meter, it could be the probe or the body. And two, the other thing could be is that it needs to be calibrated. But I don't, I'm not as interested in the meter anymore. I want you to send me those pictures. All right, I'm going to take another call. Okay, you I'm call yeah, you send me that, and then, uh, well, you keep listening. Here. We're going we're gonna to take a look at those pictures. All right, 325, you're on with the Grow Boss. All right, Grow Boss, I have a quick question. 325, I can't hear you. All right, Grow Boss, I have a quick question. 325. Hello. Now... No, I can't hear you. You're going to have to call me back. All right. Puts the... Ah, yes. Um, <laughs> um, you're going to get it. Uh, this call is pen, not as plants. Okay, 323. Um, 325. Yeah, I can hear you now. 325. Yes, sir. Hang on one sec for All me. Right. Wait, hang on one sec for me. Yes, I understand that the call was about his pen, not his plants. But the reality is, I don't know where on the planet the, the, the water comes out at zero. So that's a null value. How do we get to a zero? Now, distilled water, it's possible it could be zero. But it used to be something else. Now is tap water is zero. And zero is a null value. We can't move forward with that data. So... Does his PPM meter change with nutrients? Yes. So the body of his meter is still working. Now, I sell a meter. Sometimes the probe goes bad. Sometimes the body goes bad. One out of maybe 120 meters actually ha is not the battery or it's not eight months old and the probe went out. Like maybe one out of 120 meters has an actual problem. And it's usually in the calculation. It will turn on and it won't do the calculation right. It's not the probe, it's the body. So that's from my experience with a lot of meters. So I understand that his question wasn't what it started at, but let's take a look at the guy's garden because I heard somebody say they're in a grow box, so I'm always dying to see. And then, I'm, and then so you're in a grow box. Like the number one most expensive way to fail is grow box. And then, and I literally made a video about 
uh, number one way to fail when growing cannabis. I literally like number one way to fail when growing cannabis. Cannabis. And that is to spend, to not only fail, but to spend the most money possible doing it. Like this system. So as soon as I hear this system, whoop, I already know you can't win. And as soon as somebody says grow box, I think this system. So I'm already on the, I'm already on the damn. So three, two, five, what can I do for you? All right, grow box. I have a quick question. Uh, I follow your two light rotation right now. Okay. And uh, so I have a I have a lot of clones uh, on the side. This is my second grow, and uh, I have a lot of clones uh, left over. And I wanted to uh, do a three light rotation because I have an extra 400 watt uh, light with a 400 watt ballast. Uh, ballast. And uh, I just wanted to know, can I flower under that 400 watt light? Because I don't have any other light. I have a, a eight bulb P5 in veg, and uh, I already have. Um, maybe 24 plants up under my 1,000 watt okay. uh, light already, but I only have it at 600 right now. But um, I wanted to know, can I put those other plant, these other clones I have maybe, uh, I think I have like 15 to 16 on and uh, maybe uh, one, one inch pot oh. or something like that. And I wanted to know, can I put them up under the 400 watt and just flower those out like in a three, watt, uh, three light rotation? Okay. I Okay, so... Wait, hang on. Okay, so hang on. I got a call to the store. Hang on. Let's see what this guy wants. Let me... The store is supposed to open in like 15 minutes, so... Let me... Uh, I think I'm getting a call for this guy. Okay. Can you take them out of their little clony thing and put a bunch of them under a 400 watt and flower them? Yes. I believe that we should keep that yeah. separate from... Wait, wait. I believe that you yeah. should... Yeah. They're all, I'm sorry, they're already out of the cloning thing. They're maybe three weeks old and one, one inch pot. Now they're big. What light are they under? And I don't want to throw them, I don't want to throw them out. I don't want to throw them out. Uh, they're coming up and up under the uh, 400 watt. Uh, they're coming up, up, uh, up and under the P5 right now. Okay, then yes. You could trellis them down, put them under a 400 watt HPS and just flower them and enjoy it. However... The only way that you that is not the that doesn't make it a three light rotation. That's that just makes you had a couple of extra plants and some extra equipment and because you're not killing your shit, you see that you could use some extra space to flower. But a three light rotation is very specific, right? A three light rotation is specifically three lights to all of them the same, two in flower, one in veg. So if you're if you're veg light and your current flower light, you said you had a two light rotation. If those were both 400 watts, then yes, a third 400 watt light would make it a three light rotation. But if you had a 400 watt veg, 600 watt flower in your two light rotation, a third 400 watt light does not make it a three light rotation. You just have a 600 watt and a 400 watt flower, and you would do that because you had some extra plants. Now, that's a little bit of that stall and ball and I always talk about where it takes time to ramp up your garden because next time <coughs> yeah. one of two things will happen. Either you'll ramp up veg and you'll get a third flower and you'll do a three light garden or you won't grow as many plants uh -huh. because you'll understand what I'm saying and you will have had a good experience. You will have understood what you've done. You will have learned how to grow and then you can make an intelligent decision based on your experience. And that's really, that's really yeah. what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, hell yeah. You can flower you know them off I, to the yeah. side, yeah. but yeah, I don't know what I do. Uh, I, I, see, since the light is a 600 watt, it's a thousand watt dimmable light. What I did was um, I put them inside of that, um, veg them up under the 600 watt for maybe two weeks, and then you know, so I can have a 600 watt veg. But because I had the other plants and just some extra, I just wanted to know could I flower those out too? Yeah, the same rules still apply. <laughs> but the whole, yeah, I got a whole sound off of my first grow listening to. Excellent. But I just want to point out that you just said something else. Now you just said you went from a 600 watt veg to a 400 watt flower. I just want to point out that. No, 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 no. 
Yes, I went from a six hundred watt. I went from a four hundred watt pitch, and then I put it in uh, to my thousand watt dimmable to six hundred watt, and vegged it for under the six hundred watt right. for maybe two weeks, and then I those to flower uh, after that. And yeah, then but I had the extra plant. Right, but the extra plant. It was under a 600 watt, and then you said you were going to put it under a 400 watt that you had an extra light, right? No, no, no. the extra plant's coming from the 400 watt T5 too. I just wanted okay. to know if I could use the extra yes. 400 watt light that I have yes. and just bend the uh, flowers up without with the flower. Yes, and my whole my listen. I appreciate the call. I'm going to get back to the to uh the the garden the other question i had I, I just i just want to point out that plants don't like it when they go down in light even if you had a 600 watt light with six 100 watt plants underneath it if you were to take four 100 watt plants and you were to move them over to uh your flower light so now you have 400 watt plants you could keep them under a 600 watt light a little further away but you would still have two 100 watt plants in veg i really wouldn't dim the 600 watt light i would move it two feet further away because those plants liked that light and dimming a 600 down to four while it may seem like a reasonable action it turns out it's not once you've started growing you never want to go down you just never want to go down. I know you could thin the trellis out mathematically. You know, you have a 200 watt light with two 100 watt plants. You take one 100 watt plant and you move it over to, you now you have two 100 watt plants. You put them, you just, you can't give them less light. You could take the same light and move it further to achieve less light, but you can't physically because they hate that. Okay, now let's open up. Um, let's open up the caller that I was just like, you know, and he was saying he was growing in a grow closet. Um, okay, Hunter. Um, control W, temp 25. Look, nope. Hang a sec. Uh, okay. All right, so Hunter's got, oh, Hunter's got a good looking bud there. Okay, let's uh, open up Hunter's next picture. Ooh, it's good. Hey, good morning, Chuck. It's a good looking bud. Fuck, it's 11 o'clock. Um, okay. And finally, Hunter's big pick. Boom, look at that. I just want to point out that's not a grow closet. That is a tent, my friend, and you are almost knocking it out of the park. <clears throat> but that is not a grow closet. That looks like... You know, I just, just, that's not a grow closet, man. That's, um, <clears throat> that looks like, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like a four by four space. Um, I do, I do, I very much appreciate how you've managed to keep the trellis, the trellis itself so flat the top and bottom of the you know what i mean the top of the trellis so flat i would like to suggest however that you do have way you know what i mean you got a lot of light i don't i don't know how many quite how many plants it is it looks like there's one plant two plant so i'm going to guess three plant for a total of nine maybe ten plants it looks like plants back here but there is definitely a whole lot of light against this wall here. So I, I'm suggesting that you are really close and that the only, the only, the only thing that I think going on here is, um, I, I don't think this is a too much nutrient situation, but then you really didn't give me, whoops, you really didn't give me a close up uh, of the leaf. But then when we look at the bud, I mean, the tips even here on the tips of the buds, they don't, you know, they don't particularly look burnt. You know what I mean? The buds look the right size for the space. Um, it, it looks good. The hairs, you can still see they're kind of crystally. It looks like it might have some smell to it. So, you know, good job in terms of this. But they're the right size. But here is like this here leaf. You know, these leaves here, that's, 
that's too much light. I don't think this is finishing yet. I think you really like sort of too much light and they're sacrificing the top. I think you could get more squares full of tops because your tops look good. I do see your point about too many nutrients. So there's some yellowing of that leaf. You can see it's curled up right there. But then when you look right here on the newest of new growth, not so much. But you can see how harsh that is tipped down. You can see that this leaf is just laying down. It's dead. I believe the plant is sacrificing a little too much, a little too soon. But you're doing good. But that's not a grow closet. That's a tent. And there's a big deal difference. And that's how come that jargon, it gets, it messes you up because you got to use the right words at the right time to, to adequately express what we're trying to talk about here. That's why you got to get the right words. That's why I like it when that last caller is like, I'm on your two light rotation. Boom. I already know this guy's got some idea of the process. And the more videos that I make like this, like I told you earlier, the more videos that I make like this and the more videos you guys watch and the more we all learn to use the same jargon, the better off we'll all be. All right, let's smoke one more bowl. I'm glad you're doing so well, sir. Back off the nutrients a little. Um, um, oh, uh, um, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This just in. I'm sorry. I, um, <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's walk that entire thing back. <laughs> Let me walk that entire, in, entire thing back and let's, uh, Um, let's just make sure I think I, uh, oh my God. Uh, 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 yes. Now I'm going to show you a picture of the actual guy that called because whatever it was that I just showed you with those buds, maybe that was the PPM meter, but the, the five month old plant guide guy, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what to do, but other than just, I, I don't, I don't know what to do other than just show it to you. Dude, when I say that, when I say that soon as, soon as, soon as somebody tells you they're growing in a closet or one of those grow closets, or as soon as some, listen, I've been smoking cannabis all morning. Frankly, I don't know which caller it was anymore. Let's just start there. I don't know which caller it was anymore. I do know that this guy was probably the grow closet guy, but this plant is five months old. Okay. I mean, that's five months old. What do I tell you guys? I tell what do I, what's the picture I always show you guys? Um, in terms of, in terms of this picture right here, this picture right here is, these are four weeks old. You get five of them for 300 Watts. And what do I also I always tell you? I always tell you that if you grow in a grow room, you have a 100% failure rate. I don't, I don't really know what, what all, what all this is. This is an enormous, I, I don't know. This looks like a wiener in a bottle of something right here. He's got a couple of, a couple of lights right here and this thing right here, which is another light. And then this led up. Do you see when I, when I say in terms of insane, the types of people that do certain types of things 
end up with these certain types of results. And everywhere in their life, when people behave a certain way, like when you send food back and you mouth off, you should expect what? Oh, yeah, that's right. You, you don't disrespect the people that serve you. And when you see crazy things, you have to think crazy individual. Um, look at this. Um, I think, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that there is a whole lot going on when someone says this is some sort of hose that goes into the, is there, is there more pictures? Is there, I, I don't, oh my God. Oh, it's another water bottle. Oh, the guy's got two plants. He's cooking them with this light and this is how he waters. So it gets down to the bottom and the roots. I mean, the plant's dead. She's been dead for months and months and months. How do we know that? Because this is what a four week old plant looks like. And if your plant is five months old and looks like this, then she's been dead for three months. You know, and this is a four, five month old plant. She's been dead for four months and three weeks because as soon as you tried to grow in the system, you were going to kill your plants. So is there, is there, is there a way to get, is there more of these pictures? I mean, like, Oh, Oh, I mean, I just picture that silence of the lamb scenes dancing in the lights tucked in just going, Oh yeah. Puts the lotion in the basket. I mean, that's a creepy grow, right? I mean, the whole thing is creepy, right? You've never seen anything like that. No comment on the individual, no judgment on the person. We all do research. We all come up with answers and solutions and budgets. All I'm suggesting is you've never seen anything like this. I mean, there are literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lights. It's like a torture chamber for plants. It's like a torture chamber. I mean, it looks, it's a fucking fire hazard for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless over this. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm looking through the comments just to see, just to see, just, is it me? I mean, really, like, is it me? Because, I mean, you know, you see, I, I'm, I'm fairly arrogant about the things that I say and, you know, what to do. I'm fairly arrogant that I can predict what's going to happen next, just statistically. I, I'm, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, I just picture, you know, just, just, I'm so sexy, just tucked in. I, I don't, I mean, that's five months old. I don't, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Anyway, uh, listen, man, buy yourself a two foot eight bulb T5. Start over and just put a two foot eight bulb T5 in there. And I, I just want to point out that you got to be careful that you're not one of the people. It's easy to fall into this $6,000 nonsense. I'm a grow like this trap. But you, you got to be, I, I mean, I've had a, yeah, somebody says, you know, Celos, it looks like my grow. Listen, there's a lot of people, maybe not quite that much, but there's a lot of people. I mean, you know, we look at YouTube, dude, you look at, you look at this shit. And now we're talking about CFL 24 light can abyss. 
I mean, these are those guys who are doing this. Oh, sorry, dude, but you put the video up of yourself. Okay, so we're growing in his mom's closet. Just looking for the plants, dude. No, oh, my God. <laughs> this poor dude. <sighs> Oh my god. Bah! Uh, oh. Oh, it's. Oh. Oh, dude. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, dude. Oh my God. Anyway, so it's 11 o'clock. I'm out of cannabis. I'm just saying that I could grow with CFLs. I'm just saying by the time you finish, it's really don't really don't get the time and effort that it, I mean, you could have stepped up to a four foot eight bulb sort of as the minimum time and effort. Um, Chuck, did you bring any nugs in? Oh my God. Dude, I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I always tell you guys, like I don't do any research. I don't think about what everyone else is doing on their shows. I mean, like I, I just typed in CFL cannabis grow. I always make that joke about kids who grow in their, you know, their mom's closet, but so here it is. Um, oh yeah, I bet that dude, I bet that dude is just like, I bet that dude's just like, oh yeah, I was winning. Oh, oh my God. It's tough to kill your shit with too much light. You know what I mean? In this particular case, uh, these leaves right just for reference, these leaves right here are too much light curled down. Um, these leaves, you know, they're dead on. I mean, they're just right on the curled down. I mean, they're just, I mean, they're just all curled down. I, I also believe that back here, we were a little on the, uh, oh, 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 look at that Bucky ball of CFLs, that Buckminster Fullerene ball of, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because what you need is more light. So notice what he's done is he's built a corral. Here it comes here. Boom. He's got this little corral right here of uh of that uh ir block oh he's got one plant two plant oh dude oh look, he built a little corral there's just a fan down there in the corral oh i think it was i think it was up on a bucket did i see that was it was it up on a bucket boom they look like they're up on a little bucket because they're not close enough <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, bye bye, bye bye you, bye bye you. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. I just, oh yeah, it's really, uh, yeah. I just want you guys to know this is what happens. Okay, so I'm at like eleven hundred ppm of of a seven part nutrient. <clears throat> I've got a three hundred dollar digital meter, and uh, I'm 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 watering every other time I feed. I feed, sometimes I don't even water. <laughs> it's brutal. I'm sure there's CFLs that do better than this. But you do ah! <laughs> Oh, That's because it doesn't matter what equipment you grow with. And I think I started off this off in the beginning. There is no nutrient manufacturer who on the back of their bottle gives you a nutrient guideline for an for a Octa CFL light. 
And technically, these are 25-watt CFLs that act like 100, and if you have 8, I mean, you're at like 1,000 watts. So this dude's got 1,000 watts at 2 inches. Ah, dude, 1,000 watts at 2 inches is measuring so far from behind the balls. It's, 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 it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Oh, dude. God. Uh, scorched colas. No, if you if you have rot wool, Denali, if you're using rock wool, if you have root rot, you're watering it like hydro instead of soil. Rock wool is just a soil. This this uh those those rock wool spun fiberglass insulation shit, it's just soil. You water your plant when it needs to be watered, and if you water any more than that, they say they maintain the perfect amount of air to water ratio. All the way up until you treat it like it's hydro. Oh, dude. I, 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 uh, oh my, I keep grabbing this like there's more butt in the store. All right, so I'm going to go shake a couple, couple of customers, see who's got some butt in their pockets. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'm the Grow Boss. You can buy my books. I tell you the same thing in the books and the videos. I've got the back of the store. Um, I will, let's take a quick tour of the back of the store. Cause I'm actually, we're actually doing pretty good back here. We'll sort of end it on that. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a three light rotation. That's what's going to be in like these three squares. There'll be a three light rotation up here with LEDs. I'll do a two light rotation down here where there'll be a two foot four bulb and a four foot four bulb from, uh, from you know, the quantum bad boys. And then there'll be a couple of tables I can use for, for projects underneath here for demo stuff. We've got the plants coming into that space right there. We're gonna hang the hood on the light and that'll be a whole garden with an RO and a meter example, all of that set up in that little space. This space will have a hydro set up with a two by four table in it. Basically, I'm just making the pictures that are right out of the book. And then I think what we're gonna do is use this large, this large open space for one of a couple of things, sort of edge to edge. I was thinking about getting, like doing some live experiments inside the store, you know, like we did with the Great Root Race. You guys really seem to like that with the Great Root Race where I was comparing products. So I was thinking after we get the side set up, maybe we could do like a little lab, a little testing lab in the back, some place where we could mix nutrients and, and do the back like that because, <clears throat> well, frankly, the videos make more money for the store. People just come in from all over. So I got no problem keep investing in building stuff for the back of the store so I can literally like pull down all the botanic ears, nutrients off the shelf, open them all up, use them all. We can test them. We can determine the PPM, go through with the mega meter. Uh, so we'll just keep building the back of the store in terms of those projects. Uh, if you like the videos, my advertisers, my sponsors, they're not just sponsors. I mean, these are the products that you're going to use because they're just the best in the industry. Three ply ducting from Thermoflow. Mondi, their hygrometers, their humidity domes, seven inch domes with the two vents on them. Clonex Solution, Clonex Rooting Gel, the Clonex Root Maximizer Microbes, Green Pad, CO2, Turbo Clones. You saw that video with the Bushmaster and the, and the roots after two weeks. Knocks it out of the fucking park. So if you guys don't have any more questions and you don't, I'm going to, uh, on a positive note, that guy doesn't need to worry about smell, dude. Uh, this guy, this guy doesn't need to worry about, oh, I lost the video. Oh, dude, I am, um, yeah, I, I am, I, I see your point about most of you do research. I see your point. I started off where all of you guys were, like I told you, I learned how to grow by doing it, but it wasn't until I owned the store, you know, I, you know what I mean? I wasn't until I did this all day long that I really was able to see how many of us do the same thing. And then of course, then there's the extreme edges of the whack pack that do, that do the calcium eggshells and the stuff that we see sometimes. But 
I understand how you guys get there. That's not the part I'm judging. I'm just suggesting that where it really is, is really, really far away from, uh, from where you think it is. And then once you get there, it's even a little further. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. I, listen, it's a Sunday. The temps are cool. It's a nice day outside. Try to enjoy a peaceful Sunday. Um, everybody be good to each other. I appreciate you guys all watching. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm done sitting. I gotta go sit on the ice pack, relax my back. Thanks so much for watching.